Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to another episode of the Facebook, a journey through ideology, where we seek to explore our purpose in this universe, if there is a God, and the characteristics of this God. Inshallah, tonight we'll be diving into the book Haqqul Yaqeen, which we'll be using throughout this new series. And inshallah, tonight we'll be looking at uh, where the book uh, proves the existence of God and where does Allama Shubbar. Uh, refer to in the Quran. Joining me live from London is Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Panju. Sheikh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing tonight? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Always a pleasure to be uh, on the channel and uh, with yourself. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I just wanted to remind the viewers that if they did want to call in to ask the Sheikh a question, the number is 0203 515 0199, or alternatively, you can WhatsApp in in the number down below. So, Sheikh, um, Let's explore the book Haqq al Yaqeen. How does it prove the existence of God? Sure. So, Alama Shubbar Rahmatullah Alay, in line with a majority of the ulama, and there is a certain chronology in which these books that discuss the science of Ilmul Kalam or Aqa'id, there is a chronology in which they are authored. Mm -hmm. And this chronology is based again on a rational sequence. Mm -hmm. So you will find, for example, within Hakul Yakin, just like majority of all other mainstream texts, the Bahath begins with Kitabu Tawheed, going into Adala, and then Nabuwa, and then Imama, and then Ma'ad, mm -hmm. Ma'ad yani the afterlife. And there is a rationale behind this chronology. Why did they not start with for example, Yawmul Qiyama, Ma'ad, and then leave Tawheed as the last Bahath, for example. Why is the Bahath of Nabuwa before the Bahath of Imama? Mm -hmm. So you find that even the chronology of the chapters yeah. uh, is something which is built upon a very a rational basis. The idea is that you first prove the existence of God. Once it is established within the mind that God does exist, mm. the next step is to convince and to prove that this God, in essence, is just. Why would you go through the trouble of proving the justice of God to somebody who doesn't even believe the existence of God? Mm. Doesn't make sense. Yani, you are trying to prove the existence of an entity which you and I don't even know exists or not. So first we establish the existence of the entity and then delve into the characteristic of that entity. Yeah, Same course. thing when it comes to Nabuwa. Why would a person believe in the prophecy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam if he doesn't even believe that God exists to of begin course. with? Of course. Yani, I come and I prove that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, was sent by God and use this as the primary proof to establish the authority of Rasulullah to a person who doesn't even believe in the existence of Allah. Does that make sense? How do I prove to somebody that Imama, the position of Imama is a divine position appointed by Allah Azza wa Jal when the person doesn't even believe that Nabuwa is a divine position appointed by Allah? SubhanAllah. So you find that there is a chronology mm. in everything. And the end, Ma'ad, Ya'ni, if you believe in God and you believe that he is just mm. and he has sent for our guidance prophets yeah. and he has also sent for our guidance imams yeah. then we begin to understand how huh, all this guidance and this creation for a greater purpose for an afterlife a life that has accountability mm -hmm. and hence ma'ad akhirah so you find that even uh, our mainstream ulama, mm. 
the the thought that they put in yeah. in regards to the chronology of the chapters why tawhid is before adala and so on so forth why nabuwa before imama it has a rationale behind it okay. it's a sequence in which the mind is going through a journey mm -hmm. from one stage to the other and okay. each stage is connected okay so therefore you find that this is the general chronology that are there within the books of Ilmul Kalam authored by our uh, mainstream scholars. This okay. has been the Sunnah uh, from those at uh, the earliest time of Ghaiba and continuing on okay. uh, till today. Okay. And um, so in your hand is the Haqqul Yaqeen, the book. Um, how does Allama al marhum Shubbar uh, how does he introduce Tawheed to us? Sure. How does he present it? Um, he presents the book Kitab al-Tawheed. Mm. And within Kitab al-Tawheed, he has the first chapter, which is Al-Ikrar bi Allah Ta'ala. Al-Ikrar bi Allah Ta'ala, yani, how do we establish mm. the existence of Allah? Okay. How are we able to establish the existence of a God? Okay. Now, this is the first sub-chapter within the major chapter known as the Book of Tawheed. Mm -hmm. Once the existence of God is established, then the next step within the books, for example, is the characters, يعني, the sifat, mm -hmm. the properties of this Lord, those characters through which we are able to recognize this Lord in terms of Sifat Thubutiya, Sifat Salbiya, and we will delve into each of these in quite a bit of detail. Okay. So the first sub-chapter, within mm -hmm. the first chapter, <laughs> yeah. first chapter being Kitab al mm -hmm. the first sub-chapter within that is establishing the existence of God. Okay. Now, having said this, a small introduction or a small discussion mm -hmm. which is outside the text, but it serves as a good introduction into the text. Of course, of course. Habibi Minhal, I ask you a question in sure. that many people ask this. Yeah. How can we prove mm. the existence of a deity that, yani, how can we prove the existence of a deity mm -hmm. whom we cannot even comprehend through our five senses. Of course, of course. Yani, how do you believe in a God that you really can't comprehend? You can't understand them through your five senses. Of course, sure, sure. Yani, you can't see Allah. You can't smell Allah. You can't taste Allah. If we have a faith that shows us how we can taste Allah, <laughs> then Bismillah, we would be, we would be interested in, in this. Some said that Allah has a leg, by the way. So wow. you never know. Maybe you could have a new school of thought that comes and says, no, you can smell Allah. <laughs> Allahu alam. Uh, fa, you can't see Allah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, sure, sure. We're claiming that our Lord, you can't see Him. Mm. You can't smell Him. You can't touch him, you can't taste him, he's not, you cannot recognize him through the five senses. Mm, yeah. How can you believe in something that you cannot see or something that you cannot recognize through the five senses? I, I, I look at it as in, we live in such a perfect system. Everything we do, even when I'm into, when I delve into my studies, um, you know, I study the sciences, I study two of the three sciences and one of the things is that what, whatever goes on in, for example, a plant, everything is so chronologically ordered and everything is so perfect that if something happens here, something happens elsewhere to compensate for that. We live in such a perfect system and that cannot be something that's just by accident. Right. That's, that's how I see it. And um, I remember Hadith Tamir al muminin where he says, when someone asked him, how, do you believe in God? And he said to him, how do I believe in a God which I cannot see? Right. And he said to him, I haven't seen him with the eyes. I've seen him with the certainty of the heart. Ahsantum, barakallah feekum. And this is what we're looking to go towards. Inshallah. In that, 
our idea mm. is as monotheists yeah. when we come across objections be it from uh, a polytheist or be it from an atheist for example where they come and particularly for our viewers mm -hmm. you know nowadays within the universities the environment is very different mm -hmm. open dialogue discussion is encouraged you have Hyde Park that is a good example yeah, yeah, yeah. speakers corner where the currents where you can say the market of ideology is discussed mm -hmm. and the currency in this market is proof mm -hmm. so therefore one big message that we want to give out to is that the fact that we cannot comprehend a concept or mm. cannot recognize a concept through our five senses mm -hmm. does not necessarily mean that that concept does not exist. Of course. Yeah, and in short, it doesn't mean just because you can see it, it doesn't exist. Of course, of course. There is something much greater when it comes to the tools through which we are able to understand or recognize a concept or a deity. Of course. And that is the intellect or as you rightly quoted Amir al-Mu'minin saying the heart. Mm -hmm. I need the heart through the certainty of my intellect. Mm -hmm. And there are many things in our daily lives and there were many things in history as well mm -hmm. that could not be comprehended, that mm -hmm. could not be recognized through the five senses, but nobody could negate their existence. It's interesting you say that because when I was doing my studies in biology, one of the areas we looked at was uh, the brain and the kidney right. and how they're linked. And a lot of people, and, and this still hasn't been proven, which is that. In, in the book that I, I read, sure. it said it is believed that uh, the receptors in the brain release water. They don't actually know it for fact and they can't see it, they Ajay. can't sense it, they can't hear it. And so, you know, they still believe in this thing in, because it's science. They still believe in it, right. but they haven't proved it yet. Right. And there are so many things in our world today, yeah. uh, whether it's in chemistry, physics, biology, mathematics, that... Scientists haven't been able to prove what they still believe in it. So why not believe in God? Ahsan, this is a very valid question. There are many, many things in our daily lives. Yeah. Um, even people who are not so um, entrenched within the world of science and research and academia, there are so many things in our lives, concepts in our lives that we believe in, that we abide by, but we can not necessarily comprehend them or recognize them through our five senses. We take, for example, the concept of germs. Germs. Could you see germs with your own eyes? No. No. Until perhaps the last, God knows, three, four, five hundred years, give, take, people didn't even know the concept of germs. Of course. But does that mean before the concept of germs scientifically being proven, does that mean that germs didn't exist before the discovery? Mm -hmm. No. And just because you can see the germs underneath your fingernails, does it mean that they don't exist? No. <laughs> In fact, such an argument comes mm -hmm. out to be an absurd argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take another example, gravity. Of course. Baba, what is gravity? Can you see gravity? Can you taste gravity? <laughs> can you touch gravity? No. Yeah, you can't. But can anybody deny the existence of gravity just because you cannot see gravity with your eyes? No. Law. Can, you def uh, can you reject the existence of gravity just because you can't touch it? No. Mm. You see these arguments, Aslan, are absurd. Mm. They're ridiculous. So a person comes and tells you, yeah, you can't see gravity, you can't touch gravity, but you are able to be certain on the existence of of the laws of gravity from the effect of gravity. When you drop something from a certain height mm -hmm. down and it falls, yeah. free fall gravity, from the effect of the gravity, you can say, yes, gravity as a concept exists. Yeah. We say the same thing with Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm -hmm. You cannot see Him, you cannot taste Him, you cannot touch Him, but you can recognize His existence through the effect of His creation. Definitely. Definitely. And this is one major step that we want to establish for today's program mm -hmm. in the sense that when it comes to recognizing 
spiritual, ideological, theological truth. Mm -hmm. Truth is not existence or belief of truth is not contingent upon the fact that it is not seen or comprehended by these five senses. Mm -hmm. We have a faculty greater than that, and that is the faculty of the intellect through which we are able to comprehend greater realities that cannot be restricted through or contained through the five senses. Of course, of course. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, just, I just wanted to get to the book of Haqq al sure. and uh, what uh, Sayyid Chubbar uses from the Qur'an. Of course. So having said this, you find that uh, Sayyid Shabbar rahmatullah alayhi, rahmatullah. in his chapter of proving the existence of God within the first sub-chapter, mm -hmm. he begins by saying that proving the existence of God is one of the most simplest concepts. Wow, subhanallah. Subhanallah. One of the most simplest concepts. A concept that is so simple that it does not need proof to establish it. <laughs> yani, wow. we have this thing. And you keep this in context. I mean, a text that was written 200 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you compare this intro to the environment in which we live, mm -hmm. where it is somehow made for us to perceive that understanding the existence of a creator is something complex, if not irrational. <laughs> Sahil Ola, Sahil. this has been majority of, you find the academics yeah, or yeah, yeah, the yeah. greatest, um, if you could use these words together, atheist thinkers, okay, they yeah. have come to prove that the existence of God is something so complex and something so on one hand and on the other hand something so irrational and illogical there is no proof in order to establish the existence of God. Over here the author is saying that la, what you people are claiming that there is no proof this is the simplest of proof. Okay. One rule that thinkers give us mm -hmm. progressive thinkers who want to develop and to move further over time. Mm. When you spend time and energy yeah. proving a concept that is simple is actually not progression. Rather, it is regression. regression. You, you, you make it, you essentially make it more difficult for yourself. Yeah, and it's something that was supposed to be a no-brainer, yeah, 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 which yeah. is supposed to be so simple so simple mm. that it's supposed to be a concept that we are already over and done with. So we move to other major, more important, more crucial things. But rather what happens, we spend money and we spend energy and conferences and stop the whole dunya from rotating on its axis just to prove this point. Yani, it's not progression. This is not uh, academic progression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is actually regression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rule of thumb, when you spend unnecessary time and resources in proving a concept which is aslan so simple. So, he begins by saying this. It's something sure. very simple. Do we have time before the break to yeah, yeah, delve definitely, into definitely, this? Yeah, yeah. The Sayyid begins by establishing the existence of God. Number one, by using the proof from the Quran and then number two, he goes on to the hadith. Mm. And over here, the chapter and the proof that he has used to establish the existence of God is Al-Adilla al kawniya ala wujud Allah Ta'ala. Okay. Ya'ni, using the system of creation as a proof mm. to establish the existence of God. Okay. So, you find that in order to prove the existence of a creator, mm -hmm. the methodology, the burhan, mm -hmm. the proof, yeah. the evidence which is used in the Quran is what? There are many evidences that are used. One evidence that is used is the system of creation. Mm -hmm. The Quran uses 
the system of creation to prove the existence of God. So the methodology, and this is what is important, the methodology of establishing the existence of God through the Quran is the system of creation. And then the Sayyid goes on to the Hadith where he uses Hadith of Ahlul Bayt. Yani where Imam Sadiq debates with an atheist and uses the system of creation mm -hmm. to prove the existence of Allah. So you find that there is a common denominator over here yeah, yeah. in terms of style. Yeah. When the Quran wants to prove the existence of Allah, mm -hmm. the methodology that is used in order to get to the conclusion is the system of creation. It's the best way to prove it. Ahsantum. And you find that Ahlul Bayt in this, uh, there's, a, there's a debate of uh, Imam Sadiq salawatullahi wa salam hu alayhi with, I believe it was uh, Ad-Daysani. Okay. <coughs> Ad-Daysani was an right? atheist, atheist, very well-known atheist during the time of Imam Sadiq salawatullahi wa alayhi. And yeah. I wouldn't even call this a debate. Basically, in a nutshell, Daisani... More like um, a destruction by Imam Sadiq. I'm sorry, oh, uh, straight up. <laughs> <coughs> Planned destruction as well. But Daisani, yeah. um, he goes to Imam Sadiq and he says to him, how can you, you know, prove to me? How can you believe in a God that you cannot even see? Mm -hmm. Look at the Ishqal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A God that you cannot comprehend through the five senses. Of course. And it's the same Ishqal which you find, the same objection that you find today. It's not a new objection. No, it's an no objection that was there from the time of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Subhanallah, the Imam uses the same methodology as the Quran. Mm -hmm. The system of creation. Now over here, there's a very important side point. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And that is the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt. Mm. Hadith. The Ahsant, Hadith Thakalain. Mantik of Quran is Mantik of Ahlul Bayt. Mantik of Ahlul Bayt is Mantik no Quran. No the no style no. of the Quran is manifest in the speech of Ahlul Bayt. And the, the speech of Ahlul Bayt is manifest within the style of the Quran. Of they complement each other. Yani they are inseparable. Mm -hmm. So you find Imam Sadiq goes to Daisani, he asks him this question. And I believe this is the feeling that we get, even though it's not there, that Daishani probably feels that I have come with a super complex question, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I believe Ja'far ibn Muhammad is going to struggle with. He's blinded. <coughs> They're blinded by, they, they think that <laughs> that's, that question is going to finish him on the side. Exactly. Yani, huwe, he thinks he's an intellectual. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's come up with a question that is, yani, subhanAllah, complex and... Uh, is going to defeat a person who claims to be yani, Sadiq Ahlul Bayt and the inheritor of the Ilm of the Anbiya. So, he, Daisani asked him the question. Then Hadith mentioned Imam Sadiq was sitting and he sees a young boy walking around playing with an egg. Okay. Egg. Very strange. And he says to the child, you know, sometimes... Uh, you know, the, the egg is there, you know, even sometimes you give to, to any child, they, yeah. you know, play around with it, yeah, throw yeah, it, yeah. juggle it, whatever it of is. Course. The kid was playing around with the egg, of maybe course. flipping it around, tossing it. it. In any case, the child was playing with the egg. Mm -hmm. Imam Sadiq says to the child, come here, give me the egg. Okay. Imam Sadiq uses an egg to prove the existence of Allah. How? <laughs> now the details for this, the Imam goes to paraphrase, and this is a very summary, inshallah, maybe perhaps next week we'll look into this hadith in detail inshallah. with its references. Inshallah. But in a nutshell, the Imam says to Daisani, look at this egg. Mm. It is covered with a hard shell. Yeah. The shell is hard enough to protect the content that is inside, yet soft enough to be damaged and ruptured if it was to fall. Of course. Inside that shell, there is a layer of a substance. Yeah which is white, mm -hmm. and this forms a coating and a protection around another substance, another liquid, which is yellowish in color. And each one protects the other. Yeah, Not yeah, yeah. one of them crosses the boundary of the other. Yeah. Furthermore, from an egg, you don't know. The structure of the egg is the same. The composition of the egg is the same. Yet, from sometimes, from one egg, a male is born, 
or a female is born. And sometimes a peacock is born and sometimes a hen is born. The structure is the same. Yeah. Do you think that for all this there isn't a master architect? Oof. <laughs> Daishani left. Finished. In fact, Daishani <laughs> said, Anataib. Yani I've seen within the hadith where he says, Wa anataib mimma kuntu fi. Wow. I, I repent. I go back. Yani repent means regret as well. Mm -hmm. I go back on uh, the belief which I had subscribed to or the idea that I had subscribed to in that there isn't a, an, uh, uh, God doesn't exist. But oh, the point so over here that we want to take before we go to the break. Habibi min hal, Imam al-Sadiq used something as simple as an everyday commodity like an egg to shatter yeah, yeah. <laughs> the belief wow. of a person who was the greatest atheist of the time. What if you seize the whole earth? Ya subhanallah. <laughs> yani the imam in one way with all the complexities yeah, yeah, and yeah. the beauty of the creation of the egg. Imam al-Sadiq is saying I can use something as simple as an egg to prove yeah. the existence of Allah. Baba, this is not rocket science that you need complex philosophical knowledge coded in God knows different languages and alphabets to understand Allah. The most simplest yeah. things that surround us are a proof of the existence of Allah. I think it's just <laughs> shaitan works in, in very good ways because if we just look at our system, our bodily system, we don't go yeah. any th an inch further than us. Of course. Every person, everyone. If we look at the, the system that within which we are in, right, our bodies, we find that it can't just, it can't be random. It can't. You, the movement cannot be random within There's our body. There's perfect coordination, perfect coordination between all the different organs in our body. There's yeah. perfect coordination uh, with all the different cells that are within our body. Just the coordination, so on and so forth. Hopefully this is something we can discuss uh, further into detail. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikhna, for giving us a great and beautiful insight into the book, Haqqul Yaqeen, at, for, uh, written by Sayyid Shubbar. Inshallah, we will go to a uh, break with the Adhan and Salah. And Inshallah, if you would like to ask the Sheikh a question, then you can call in on 0203 515 0199 or alternatively, WhatsApp in your, uh, your question in the number below. Inshallah, we'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us again on the Facebook, A Journey Through Ideology. This is the second part where we'll be taking your questions and we'll be further discussing the book Haqqul Yaqeen. I do want to remind the viewers that if you do want to call in and ask the Sheikh a question, please call in on 0203 515 0199 or alternatively, WhatsApp in your questions in the number down your screen. So, Sheikh, before the break, we were discussing uh, about where Allama Shubbar rahmatullah discusses, uh, he, he actually talked about how easy it is to prove the existence of God. Of course. But where does he reference it in the Quran? Of course. Ahsantum. Uh, first of all, taqabbal Allah. A'malakum wa salatkum. Insha'Allah. Uh, I think it's a great initiative and it's an important initiative uh, taken by yourselves and by the channel. That when, do we, when we do have programs mm -hmm. um, coinciding with the time of Salat, that you know a break and Adhan is given appropriately so that Salat can be obtained, uh, can be uh, performed and recited for Shukran uh, Jazilan. Just because you mentioned that, um, I wanted to just put a hadith from Imam Sadiq. He says in his wasiyyah to Imam Musa ibn Jafar, he says, Salaam Tell our Shia that the one who neglects their Salah does not receive our shafa on the day of judgment. So, salah on time, brothers and sisters. Barakallah. Thank you. Um, 
the proof that is used mm -hmm. um, in terms of methodology. So the methodology, the proof through which the existence of Allah can be established Azza wa Jal through the Quran. Sayyid al-Shabbar over here makes a reference to Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 164. Mm -hmm. So even um, you know if we had uh, iPhone smartphones or whatever to pull up the verse and follow and have a look at the translation yeah. look at the manner in which Allah Azza wa Jal engages the intellect mm -hmm. of the people the minds of the people in order to recognize him Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim inna fi khalq samawati wal ard mm -hmm. one وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ mm -hmm. Two. وَالْفُلْكِ الَّتِي تَجْرِي فِي الْبَحْرِ بِمَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسِ mm -hmm. Three. وَمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ مَاءٍ Four. فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا Five. وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ Six. Mm -hmm. وَتَسْرِيفِ الرِّيَاحِ وَالصَّحَابِ المسخر بين السماء والأرض لآيات لكوم يعقلون wow. Within these six or seven signs mm -hmm. in the system of creation there are signs for those who ponder لآيات لكوم يعقلون عقل Those who can comprehend with the mind Tayyib. So within this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out mm -hmm. to the system of creation, the perfection, and this is the key over here, the perfection within the system of creation mm -hmm. is used to establish the existence of a creator. And the examples that are used over here, or the example cited by the Creator Azza wa Jalla himself, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in fi khalqis samawati wal ard. Indeed, within the creation of the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. Yani the heavens and the earth meaning what? Yani the skies and the earth? La. Yani within what is understood as samawati wal ard, samawat. Mm. Yani within the creation of the entire universe of course and the galaxies yani the skies what yeah, is yeah, yeah. above and beyond definitely definitely you contemplate just on the number of galaxies within the observable universe subhanallah look at the words that are used by the scientists huh? yeah, 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 yeah. observable universe <laughs> yani there is the scope and the vastness of the universe which is beyond the realm of observation. He says, and this is an established fact, huh? I'm sure you can, anybody can research this, mm -hmm. and the scientists come forward and they say, within the ob observable universe, the number of galaxies that exist they range from 200 billion to 2 trillion. Oof. Wow. Can the mind even comprehend the reality of 2 trillion galaxies? <laughs> I think we have a call. Yeah, um, we have a call on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, how are you? Uh, what's your name, please? My name is Mustafa and I'm calling from Manchester. Mustafa from Manchester. And your question for the Sheikh. Uh, thank you, Brother Mustafa. Um, why is it so hard for people to believe in Allah? MashaAllah. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, thank you. Sheikh, it's a very valid question. I, I ask that question to many people. Why, why do you find it so hard to believe in a creator? Of course. Uh, there, are many, there are many dimensions. Mm. Um, and many factors that contribute towards a person negating the existence of Allah. Number one, the unnecessary complication of a concept in reality which is fairly simple. Mm. When a simple concept is overcomplicated unnecessarily yeah. under the guise of intellectualism, that simple straightforward concept becomes a complex, mm. uncomprehendable concept 
So I believe this is not the only answer. This is one of many answers. Of course, of course. Is that all these over uh, complications, unnecessary, extensive complications yeah, when it yeah, comes yeah. to e establishing the existence of God, sure. has thrown people into doubt. So yani, it's the amaliya, it's the mm. procedure. We're not against in-depth academic uh, conversation course. discussions. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong. Of course. Of but course, what yeah. we're saying is the amaliya, the procedure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. see how the mind is affected through these procedures. Mm. Yani, it's this procedure, this tendency, this human habit yeah, of yeah. overcomplicating a concept so simple such that the straightforwardness and the absolute reality surrounding the simplicity of the concept becomes difficult to understand and we actually go ahead and we refute it. This is number one. Number two, some people, they don't necessarily disbelieve in, in God. They don't disbelieve in the existence of God. But actually what the issue is that they don't want to be compliant by the rules of God. And because you don't want to be compliant to the rules, you negate the authority of that person of imposing the rules on you. That's two of many reasons, Sheikh. I believe we sure. have another caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, alaikum. Your name and uh, where you're calling from, please? Uh, I'm Sajjad Jaizani. I'm calling from London. MashaAllah. Brother Sajjad, what is your question for the Sheikh, please? Habibi Sheikh, every day in the school, uh, I, they always debate about Allah's existence, that He doesn't exist or He does. What is a strong point that I could use to prove to them of his existence? Absolutely. Subhanallah. Amazing Habibi question. Sajjad, a uh, valid question and one of the best, strongest, irrefutable proofs that we want to use is from the Quran and from Ahlul Bayt. Of course. And that is the verse that we are uh, proving for today. Inshallah. Inshallah. And that is the perfection within the system of creation. Mm -hmm. This in itself is an indication that there exists a master architect. Of course. So actually, uh, Sayyid Sajjad's question mm. is uh, is answered through today's show. So mm. if we get through this Inshallah, first. I think we should get to it. <laughs> so the Sayyid says, Allah Azza wa Jalla, the Sayyid quotes the verse of the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, within the creation of the heavens and the earth, yani within the creation of this entire universe. Yes. And what we were saying is that within the observable universe, there are 200 billion to 2 trillion galaxies each one of them containing more stars than the grains of sand on earth Subhanallah. each galaxy each galaxy each galaxy and the distance between each galaxy is hundreds of thousands of millions of light years now I ask you how did this come into existence? <laughs> where did it, you can't even say, it fell from the sky. The literally. brain can't comprehend where, it. Where did it come from? See, what many people argue is, and that's, every, that's thrown around a lot in the media today and a lot of scientists throughout millennials, millennials, millennials. Right. The Big Bang Theory. Sure. I think we should disprove and, you know, once and for all, the Big Bang Theory, because right. it's in the title, it's a theory. Of course. In terms of the Big Bang Theory, mm. where the concept that comes in, or the version of the concept where existence of this universe began from a random explosion. Random explosion, yani something that happened by chance, what we are saying is, through this verse of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 164, mm -hmm. this entire system of creation is so perfect. The system in itself is so perfect. Numerous aspects of perfection cannot happen out of chance. Of course not. It cannot be a coincidence that a million things form themselves in total perfection by chance. Definitely not. One thing can fall into perfection by chance. Two things can happen by chance. But a million, if not more, all of them 
Trillions. By chance, fall into a perfect system of perfection, the mathematical probability mm -hmm. that this system of creation came into existence by chance mm -hmm. with all its perfection, the mathematical probability or possibility wow. for this is zero. Wow. <laughs> mathematical poss possibility. Uh, we can do a small exercise on that perhaps next week. Even yeah. if we just remove a calculator yeah. and start calculating what is the possibility of this happening, perfection by chance, times this, times that, multiple probabilities, yani multiplication mm -hmm. of each, yeah. taking a simple equation of 0.5, because when you say yeah. by chance, 50-50, it course. could have happened by perfection or not by perfection. Mm -hmm. Take that and start multiplying with a calculator. Mm -hmm. By the time you think of 50 things in your mind, that could have been created by chance from this universe, you find that you are already moving towards zero. Mm -hmm. So mathematically, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's, it's an impossible uh, occurrence. Mm -hmm. The Sayyid goes forward, he says, you look at this galaxy, you look at the vastness of this galaxy, yeah. the, 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 the manner in which it's created and the way in which it's aligned, just the sheer numbers, mm -hmm. just the sheer numbers, and then he goes on to say, وَإِخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ oh, wow. The system of the day and night, what mm. we say, the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun. يعني, the rotation of the earth around its axis, yeah. which causes day and night. Yeah. يعني, the earth rotates around its axis on mm. a 24-hour basis, creating daylight and creating night. Did this system happen by chance? How does it rotate? How does it rotate? <laughs> and why is it that this occurrence that happened by chance, randomly, ended up in a system of perfection? Was there a time where this earth was not rotating around its axis? Of course, of course. Was there a time that it was rotating around its axis but at a speed much faster or much slower than this? Yani, the rotation of Earth at a perfect speed that is conducive for life, that facilitates for hours of day and night that are crucial to the existence of a human being. But by chance? How? Sheikhna, uh, there's a question on uh, coming in through social media right now. Uh, Brother Ahmed from Norway asks, Why does Allah not reveal for us a miracle f uh, to allow us to prove His existence? Sure. There are a number of miracles. Number one, and this is moving forward in our bahath, but number one, Habibi, Rasulullah himself is a miracle. Of Al Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi is the proof of the existence of Allah. The biggest wow. miracle of Allah is Amir al Mu'minin. <laughs> Show me the create who is capable of creating a personality like Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. His existence, the qualities of Amir al Mu'minin is the biggest indication of a creator. Of course. I want. But you don't even need to go to Amir al-Mu'minin. Mm. Ani personally, personally, I think, God forgive, it's almost like an insult and doing injustice to Amir al-Mu'minin by saying that you need a person as great as Amir al-Mu'minin to prove the existence of Allah. You don't need a miracle to prove the existence of God. It's like the way Imam al-Sadiq said, yeah, yeah, yeah. you use a simple egg yeah, 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 yeah. that is laid by the hen in your backyard, the omelette, Habibi, that you eat for breakfast, is a shouting, screaming proof of the existence of Allah. It's very interesting you bring up Amir al-Mu'mineen because uh, the books of history do tell us that and uh, just for the viewers out there, we are not trying to dive into shirk or anything but the only person in Islamic history who was close to being called Allah and people were willing to do sujood for him was Amir al-Mu'mineen nah, nah, nah. They said that um, there were people, astaghfirullah, they said that Amir al-Mu'mineen because of his qualities, because of the way he spoke, because of his eloquence, his wisdom, his knowledge, that he was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Astaghfirullah. But the if the creation mind, of Allah is the, perceived ah, like this. The human mind is not able to understand Amir al-Mu'mineen, wow. who is the creation, then what about the creator of Amir al-Mu'mineen? And for, for this reason, just because the topic came up, Bain al-Qawsayn, 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم الله ما سوّل على محمد وعلى محمد in one of the traditions he purposely tells his he tells the Sahaba and he tells the companions had it not been for my fear that you would do to Ali like the way the people did to Isa ibn Maryam yani shirk had I not been scared that you are going to do the same thing with Ali like mm -hmm. the way the people yeah, yeah, did yeah. with Isa ibn Maryam I would have mentioned for you merits of Amirul Mu'minin merits of Ali that you would take sand from under his feet and get blessings from that ma'naha yani rasulullah hid so many fadail from us everything that we think we know that amir mu'minin is so great baba he is greater than that every time you think wow he's so great baba he is greater than that <laughs> there are fadail that rasulullah wow. has hidden yeah, because yeah. the people are not intellectually mature enough no. to comprehend them no. so then what about the creator so coming back to the verse over here you find that he uses this perfection within the creation yeah, yeah, yeah. if you contemplate over day and night you contemplate over the creation of this universe you contemplate over look at what he says what allah azza wa jalla says within the quran wal fulki allati tajri fil bahr okay if you were to contemplate over the ships that sail on the waters of course yes you will be able to prove the existence of god yeah 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 ajeeb how a ship floats on water boat floats on water through the laws of density wow this is what science will tell you yeah, yeah. our question is who created the laws of density so perfectly that allows yeah yeah travel through the waters science only discovered it we are asking a question deeper than that mm -hmm. who set the laws of density of are you course. telling me the laws of density came into place randomly through a random explosion no, no, just no. randomly with density falling into yeah, place yeah. the rotation of the earth on its axis and randomly the galaxies thousands mm. of them in the same way so to end as a conclusion over here from this verse yeah the perfection yeah of the system of creation in itself is proof of the existence of a master architect of this perfect system mm -hmm. being god number 2 contemplation tadabbur and tafakkur over the creation over the earth the system in which we live will lead us to the conclusion of the existence of a god It's so, not rocket science. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Can be proved through things that are everything definitely. around us. Definitely. And just uh, one thing to add on to that: it can, the water can pick up a ship, but when you drop a nail into it, it, it sinks to the bottom of the sea. Inshallah, we will see you next week on the Faith Book, a journey through ideology, where we seek, where we go deeper into the book Hakk al Yaqeen and proving the existence of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Inshallah, we'll see you next week with Sheikh Muhammad Abbas Panju. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته